So we've looked at how to create a function and in this video we're going to have a look at recursion. So recursion is where you get a function uh, to call itself. But before we have a look at how and why you might want to do that, um, let's just have a quick look at um, this uh, factorial function. So factorial is a mathematical function indicated by um, a exclamation mark or an exclamation mark. So on the calculator the button will look like that. If you've never come across that, um, it's used in things like um, some probability things, combinations and permutations etc. Um, but you don't come across it that often, particularly up to GCSE level. Uh, what it is, is you take a number, so one factorial is one, and then 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So it's all the products of the integers between 1 and the number that we're finding the factorial of. So 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So this is a very common example uh, that people give when looking at recursion. So let's have a quick look at how you might do that um, with given what we know so far. So what you could do, let's create a function and we'll call it factorial. And it's gonna take a number as an argument or parameter. And what we're gonna do is, um, I'm not gonna use the factorial name again, so I'm just gonna call it fact. So to begin with, I'm gonna set fact to be one. So you need to be a little bit careful when you're multiplying. Obviously, if you set it to zero to begin with, then when you multiply, it's not going to have an effect. So just be a little bit careful when you're initializing your variables. And then there's no point in doing um, starting at one, is there? But uh, so if I did uh, for for n in range, so we're going to count up from two to um, the number itself. So if somebody says six, we're going to count up from two to six. Uh, remember that Python always stops one short, so I'm going to count up to number plus one. And then each time we go around, I'm just going to multiply um, fact by the current number. So remember we can do plus equals to increment or add uh, to a variable. We can uh, use other operators as well, so you can do minus equals and in this case times equals. So times equals means multiply the existing value of factorial by, um, in this case, n. And then all we need to do is, because this is a, a function, rather than printing, I'm going to return the value. So I'm going to return the value of um, the factorial. Now let's just have a look at some examples here. So obviously we can work out uh, the value of these quite easily because they're small. They do get big very quickly, but, but obviously 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, and um, that's going to be 24. So let's just check uh, that my program works with this particular example. So if you've written a function in Python and you just want to test it without having to write the rest of the program, one thing you can do is you can, if you, after you run it, you can then use that function over here. So if I say factorial two, it'll show me what the answer is. So factorial three, uh, factorial four, so those answers match the ones that we came up with on the slide here. So that's all well and good, and that's, uh, that's a reasonable way to do it. However, if we look at the, the, um, the pattern here, what we notice is that um, 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1, well, 2 times 1 is 2 factorial, isn't it? And 4 factorial, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, or 3 times 2 times 1 is 3 factorial. So, in general terms, we can find a factorial by multiplying a number by uh, the factorial of a number that's one smaller. So, in general terms, if I just pick a different color, there we go. So, uh, n factorial is um, n times n minus 1 factorial. So, we can take advantage of that uh, and... Uh, use a technique called recursion to actually perform some sort of calculations. So this is using a technique called recursion. Recursion is where a function calls itself or kind of does something unto itself. I've tried to create some visual anal analogies, um, but I haven't got very far with this. So um, for example, here's a puppet using a puppet. That's a kind of example of recursion. And here we've got a heart made up of hearts. 
So that's a kind of an example of recursion. And um, that's a car driving a car. And this one's a little bit more obscure. It's actually a model village of Corfe Castle. And obviously it's within the town or village of Corfe Castle. But the reason I thought this was interesting is actually because it includes at the bottom left here the model village itself. So the model village contains itself. And in fact, if you um, bend down and have a look at the model village, the model village contains the model village. And I think there might be a fourth one in there as well. So uh, that's a kind of visual analogy of... Um, recursion, so a thing kind of um, a repeating pattern on a smaller scale. It's used in programming for things like drawing trees or lattices. And if you have a look at my um, examples in, in the text below the video, there's links to scratch programs as well where I've used the recursion technique. So let's have a look at how we can use this in our program. So I'm still going to have a, a function called factorial. And what I'm going to say is if if number is one so the factorial of one is one so we'll return the value one so that's that matches here so one factorial is one so that's what we know otherwise what we're going to do well we what we're going to return is we're going to return number times um, factorial so the function is going to call itself number minus one. So now, hopefully, if I run this again, we should get the same answers using a different technique. So now if I do factorial one, I get the answer one. If I do factorial two, I get the answer 2. If I do factorial 3, I get 6. If I do factorial 4, I get 24. So I get the same answers as I did last time, but a different technique. The program calls itself, and all it needs to know is what happens uh, when I get to 1. Otherwise, for every other number, the factorial of that number is the number itself times the factorial of one less than that number. So that's a quite a common um, example of where you might use factorial. There are more complex examples, particularly for A level, so Towers of Hanoi, for example, or Traversing Trees. But another kind of um, more everyday example that you might come across is if you want to check whether a number, or sorry, a word, is a palindrome. Now, a palindrome is uh, a word that's the same backwards and forwards. So aha or abba or madam, uh, for example. Um, and uh, so how can we check that? Well, actually, Python, um, for all its, all its faults, has a, a very nice feature, uh, which we can we looked at in the string slicing video. Um, so remember, when we looked in the string manipulation video, we said you can reverse a string by uh, just doing this. And what that does is it reverses because the leaving out the first two parameters uh, in the brackets um, means start at the start, end at the end. And the third one is the step size. So having a step size of minus one means it counts backwards through the word. So what we could do is we could say um, we could just return. So don't forget, you don't have to store the value and return it separately. You can do something like this. So return. Um, word equals uh, word. So what that'll do is this bit will be evaluated. So is the word the same as the word backwards? That'll be evaluated to true or false. And then that value will be returned. So if I run that program now, if I say is palindrome. Notice I've um, picked the name of the function to match the sense of what it returns. So it begins with the word is because it tells me whether it is or not. So if I say aha, oops, I can't spell it, it's going to say true. Um, if I say is palindrome um, hello, it's going to say false. So that's a, 
that's quite a Pythonic way to do it. In other programming languages, it, it's a bit more tricky to reverse a word, so you'd probably have to loop through. Um, so you, what you could do is you could loop through the word a character at a time and add that to the end of, sorry, add that to a beginning of the string um, so that you'd, you're effectively reversing the word. So that would be an iterative um, technique. Um, but there's a nice um, technique for finding a palindrome which is recursive as well. So let's have a look at uh, what a palindrome is. So a palindrome, a word is a palindrome if it's got one or fewer um, letters in it. So if it's down to a single letter then it's a palindrome because it's the same backwards and forwards and in fact if it's down to kind of nothing then that's also the same backwards as forwards. Um, any other word, so if you've got aha or um, madam, for example. We, if we're checking their um, palindromes, uh, a word is also a palindrome if the first and the last letter is the same and the middle bit is a palindrome. So in that case, H is because it's a single letter, so that ma matched our first um, condition. Uh, Madam, so the first and the last letter are the same, and then we can check whether the middle bit is a palindrome. So how can we do that recursively in Python? Well, we'll keep the same name. So what we're going to do, we'll say if, if the length of the word is less than two, oops, then we'll say that it is true. So we'll say return true. If the um, if the first letter of the word, so word zero, is not equal to the last letter of the word, so word minus one, and if you're not sure about um, this string manipulation, uh, this is called string slicing, um, have a look at my uh, manipulating text video. So if that is not true, um, first and last one then it's false it can't be a palindrome otherwise then what we need to do is uh, return whether the middle bit the remainder is a palindrome so is palindrome the middle part now the middle part again we can use string slicing for that so word we're going to start at uh, character one and we're going to go as far as minus one. So that's going to give us the whole word apart from the um, first and last letters. So I'm just checking my. Yeah. So if I run this now, so obviously it's slightly longer in the Python example because Python's so good at reversing the length of the string. But let's have a look if this works. So we're going to say is palindrome. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that if it'll let me. So is palindrome hello? Okay, so it's saying it's saying there's an error. In fact, because I've missed out the n in the uh, the name of the function there. So in fact, it wasn't quite recursive because it was actually calling a completely different function. But now it should be okay. So let's try that again. And um, so luckily, I've copied that so let's try this again okay so is hello a palindrome no it's not is um, madam a palindrome yes it is so that's doing the same task just using uh, that recursive idea now in that case it's probably with Python, that's probably a more long-winded way to do it, but it's an interesting idea nonetheless. Also, if you've been looking through the um, OCR coding challenges, if you're a GCSE student, um, then you might have come across this one, which is um, prime factorization. So I won't um, sit there, uh, I won't make you sit there while I type the code in, so I'll just show you how this particular one works. So um, let's see if I can zoom out and get it all in on one go. So I've got my factorize program 
uh, my factorize function and what it does is it's uh, commented and I'll put a link in the text below the video so you can actually have a look at this yourself so um, it takes a number and what it does it, first of all it checks whether the number is prime so it uses a boolean um, variable to indicate whether it's prime or not so it assumes it is because the, the basic technique is to assume it is unless it finds a factor so it's going to start at 1 although we know 1's a factor so the first thing it does is increase the um, the variable so it actually starts at 2 effectively so it only needs to count up to the square root of number as well so I've used um, a square root technique if you're not sure what that's doing have a look at my number technique video the reason I've raised number to the power of 0.5 rather than using a square func square root function is just to avoid having to import the square root function because um, Python doesn't have a square root function built in so I'm counting up to the square root of the number and I'm checking using um, modular arithmetic again there's another video on that um, whether my factor divides exactly into number and if it does then I found a factor and it's not a prime number anymore. So if I get to the end of this first section and it is still a prime number, then I'm going to add that number to the list of prime numbers. Okay, so it is a prime number, um, so that's fine. Otherwise, I'll have found a factor. So what I will then want to do is factorize that factor. And But because factors come in pairs, if the number that I found, if factor is a factor of number, then number divided by factor is a factor. So if, if this is 6, for example, and uh, I found 2, then um, 3 will also be a factor. 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 2 and 3 will both be factors. So um, that's how that works. So it looks for further factors of the factor it's just found, and it, call, it does that by calling itself recursively. So if I run that program, I mentioned 6, so if I put 6 in there, it tells me that 6 is 2 times 3. Um, you should be familiar with uh, prime factors if you've done GCSE maths, if you're in the UK. But basically, prime factors are just factors of a number that are prime numbers themselves. And so if I pick a bigger number, well, if I pick 12, 12 is twice 6, isn't it? So it's going to be 2 times 2 times 3. And there we go. So you can put any number in there. Um, so prime factorization, again, might not be... You might not think that's a particularly exciting topic, but it is used in encryption. So uh, the prime, factorization, well, prime factorization of very large numbers is used for keys when encrypting data. Okay, so that's a quick look at recursion. Recursion is when you get a function to call itself, and it's kind of doing the thing to itself, like my um, examples here. So like the puppet using the puppet or the car driving the car or the heart made of hearts and it's useful for some things not everything you probably rarely use it in your programming work but there are nice examples and have a look at the links to those examples in the text below this video